we have serpents and salamanders, both at Gobekli Tepe and Kutimbo. Uh, on the side of a pillar at Gobekli Tepe, we have this large-headed serpent. And the same kind of serpent with that large, almost newt-like or sperm-like head is found uh, carved onto the side of this cave at uh, Cusco. The Kutimbo pillar has these two little figures emerging out of it with their hands arranged in a very definite pattern in front of them. And you find the same emergence of a figure with its hands in front of it from that pillar in Gobekli Tepe. Um, there is a serpent on the side of the pillar from Tiwanaku, as there is a serpent on the side of the pillar from Gobekli Tepe. Viracocha, his travels eventually took him to Manta in Ecuador, uh, from where he crossed the Pacific Ocean walking on the water, hints of a high technology, and a lost archaeological report uh, of underwater structures uh, off uh, the coast of Peru and Ecuador, um, going back to the 1960s. Easter Island which Robert Schock will be dealing with tomorrow. We are told that these uh, Easter Island figures are seven or 800 years old, the Moai of Easter Island. Um, and that dating is based largely on organic material uh, pulled out of the walls th on which some of the figures stand. Now, can you see the contradiction? Because if you look at this wall, you'll see that in the wall on the right, there is actually an ancient Easter Island head embedded in the wall. Do you see that? Well, that tells us that the wall is younger than the Easter Island figures because they cannibalized a head from one of the figures to build the wall. Um, is it possible that the figures are much older? If you go to Ranuraraku Quarry, uh, you can see the Easter Island heads sticking out of the ground. Um, you might think that they don't go down very far, but Tor Heyerdahl, who excavated the site in the 50s and again in the 80s, showed that these figures actually go down 30 feet under the ground. Um, I had the privilege of knowing Tor Heyerdahl. He was a great man, a big believer in Atlantis, as a matter of fact. And I think if he had seen Gobekli Tepe, he would immediately have noticed what many of us have noticed, uh, which is the hands of the Gobekli Tepe figures and the hands of the Easter Island figures. The way the hands meet in front of the belly over a belt is astonishingly similar in both cases. And indeed, we find these patterns and shapes all around the world. The Easter Island figures are bearded, of course. They don't just have gigantic chins. Those are beards. Uh, and we find bearded figures at La Venta in Mexico also, who do not look at all like Native American Indians, and they're always associated with the legend of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent. Um, and uh, you can see other examples here uh, of these bearded figures from Monte Alban and Oaxaca in the oldest archaeological strata. Now, interestingly, we find bearded figures in Sumer as well. This one's wearing a fish on his head. Um, and He's carrying a cute little man bag. <laughs> you see? You see the man bags? Um, this is Oannes. He's the civilizer. He's the antediluvian civilizer who brings civilization to the land of Sumer in, in the remote past. Now, the weird thing is that the man bag that the Oannes figures carry is the same as the man bag in this Quetzalcoatl figure from La Venta in Mexico, uh, right the way across the world. How are we to explain that connection, especially since similar man bags appear on the top of one of the Gobekli Tepe pillars? Exactly the same pattern and very similar iconography. I think we may be looking at the symbolism uh, of a, a cult or a brotherhood that passed down knowledge from a lost civilization into historical times, and that what we see is not the invention of architecture and agriculture at Gobekli Tepe, but the reinvention or the transfer of technology from an earlier time. That's the fingerprint of the Younger Dryas Comet. Don't write that comet off. Watch out for the new science that's coming out in the next six months, the new papers that, that settle here definitively. There was a comet impact 12,800 years ago. It's possible that some fragments of the debris stream of that comet are still in orbit. 
uh, Victor Klub and Bill Napier think that there's a 30 kilometer piece out there orbiting in the torrid meteor stream. We should be looking out for this rather than blithely uh, ignoring it. Um, otherwise, you know, our civilization, our so-called civilization, we're so busy slaughtering one another, hating one another, filled with fear and hatred and suspicion, when in fact we're all one, we're all brothers and sisters. There's no difference between a, a, a human being from America and a human being from Turkey and a human being from the Amazon. We're all human beings and we need to, we need to cultivate that spirit of love and, and we need, never mind asteroids and comets, we're going to destroy ourselves unless, unless we actually show love. But we are the first civilization that could avert a cosmic disaster if we choose to do so. All it would take is the will and the love. Thank you.